Hello, I am Bastav and I am from class 10 of Onundre Academy Tonga. So today I am going to explain the structure of human heart. So before going to learn about the structure of human heart, let us understand a little bit what actually a heart is. So heart is basically a muscular organ which is protected by our ribcage. Uh, it pumps blood through the uh, blood vessels of our circulatory system. Okay, so now let us understand the structure. So heart is basically divided into four chambers. The two upper chambers are called right atrium and left atrium. The two lower chambers are called uh, right ventricle and left ventricle. So now a question arises that why we have considered this side is right and this side is left. Whereas when we see that this side is actually left and this side is right. So the answer to this question is that when we study anatomy, we don't consider the diagrams like this, but in like this. That means what? Uh, for me, suppose for me, uh, this one is my right and this one is my left. Similarly, for this heart, this side is its right and this side is its left. Okay, so now uh, the deoxygenated blood is entered uh, into the right atrium of the heart through the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava brings the deoxygenated blood from the upper body and the inferior vena cava from the lower body. After that, the deoxygenated blood uh, passes through the uh, tri tricuspid valve into the right ventricle of the heart. After that, when the uh, right side of the heart contracts, uh, the deoxygenated blood uh, flows into the pulmonary artery through the pulmonary valve. This pulmonary artery uh, makes the deoxygenated blood reach the lungs for oxygenation. After the oxygenation, oxygenation of blood is done, the oxygenated blood is entered into the uh, left atrium of the heart by the pulmonary veins. After that, the oxygenated blood is entered into the left ventricle of the heart through the mitral valve. After that, the oxygenated blood is uh, passed through the contraction of left side of the heart. Uh, so when uh, the left side is contracted, the oxygenated blood uh, flows through the aortic valve into the aorta. So this aorta now distributes the uh, oxygenated blood into the entire body uh, for our requirement. And that's how a heart works continuously. So that was all about the uh, structure and also the working mechanism of the heart. Thank you so much. I am Devanjit Kachari of class 10, roll number 13, section JNG, Honorary Academy. So here let's talk about the structure of human heart. The heart is one of the most important organs in the human body. It is located in between the lungs, in the thoracic cavity, slightly towards the left of the sternum which is also known as the breastbone. The main function of heart is to pump blood throughout the human body. The human heart is covered externally by a thick muscular covering called the pericardium. Below the pericardium there is a parietal layer of serous membranes. The heart is a muscular bag that is made up of a special type of muscle called the cardiac muscles which helps in the heart in contraction and relaxation. The outer layer of heart is made up of three layers. The outer epicardium, the middle myocardium and the inner endocardium. The heart is divided into two sides by a muscular wall and has four chambers namely the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium and the right left ventricle. Uh, the chambers, which is known as the ventricles, pump blood throughout the body and the atriums receive blood. Also, the left side of the heart circulates the deoxygenated blood and the right side circulates the oxygenated blood. The muscular wall that divides the heart into two sides, namely the left side and right side, is known as the septum. It prevents the oxygenated blood from getting mixed up with the deoxygenated blood. Valves play an important role in the heart. Valves are present on, bo on both sides where the atriums open into the ventricles. The ones on the right side is called the tricuspid valve and the ones on the left side is called the bicuspid bulb. So the deoxidated blood from all over the body is pumped to the right auricle through the vena cava then the blood flows into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. From the right auricle, the pulmonary artery carries the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. In lungs, the blood gets oxidized. 
the this oxygenated blood is poured in the left atrium through the pulmonary vein the blood travels to the left ventricle from where it leaves the heart through the aorta a regular exercise a healthy diet and a fresh mind keeps the heart in a healthy condition that is why we must take care of our heart thank you My name is Sharam Saburo. I am from class 10 Arunade Academy, Tangla. In this video, I am going to explain about Ohm's law. So to know about Ohm's law, we have to know the relationship between current and potential difference. And to know the relationship between these two, we have set up an activity. In the first case, we have connected one cell in a circuit and voltmeter, ammeter and a plug key. And in, again in the second case, we have connected two cells in a circuit and one voltmeter, ammeter and a plug key. And again in that third case, we have connected three cells and one voltmeter, emitter and a plug key. From all the three cases, we have noted down the reading of emitter and voltmeter in a table. From the first case, we have noted down the reading of emitter as I1 and voltmeter as V1. And from the second case, we have noted down the reading of emitter as I2 and voltmeter as V2. Accordingly, from the third case, we have noted down the reading of emitter as I3 and voltmeter as V3. Here we have obtained that I1 by V1 equal to I2 by V2 equal to I3 by V3. We have find approximately the same value for V1 I obtained in this case. From this table we have drawn a graph and we have obtained a straight line. From the graph we can say that V is directly proportional to I where the temperature is kept constant. So this relationship is found out by a great scientist George Simon Ohm. Here v, the proportionality sign is replaced by equal sign and R is given where R is constant and R equal to P by I, where R is resistance. Resistance means it is the property of a conductor to resist the flow of charges through it. Since the assignment of voltage is P and assignment of current is ampere, so the assignment of resistance is volt by ampere, where it is named as ohm. So ohm's law means if a constant temperature is maintained, current flowing through the cross section of a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied at the two end of the conductor. So this is the main concept of Ohm's law. Thank you. Good evening sir, my name is Silma Verman. I am from class 10 section J and G and my rule number is 10. And so I begin with my project. My project is about structure of human heart. We know that heart is a part of the blood circulatory system and probably the most important part as it is the organ that produces and pumps blood into our body and its size is about a fist of a hand. Now the heart is a muscular organ which is present in the center uh, of our chest between the two lungs and its narrow end is pointed, uh, pointed towards the left side. The heart pumps blood throughout, the, throughout one's life. Before understanding how the heart pumps blood, let us understand its structure first. First is the outer covering. First is the outer covering of the heart. As we can see here, the heart is a double wall membrane covering called the pericardium. Now in between these two walls is present a pericardium fluid, which actually acts like a lubricant. So lubricant there is no picture when our heart is beaten. And the heart uh, has four chambers, the upper two atriums that is left and that is left and right atriums, uh, that is left and right atriums, and the lower two and the lower two ventricles are that is left and right ventricles. The atriums receive blood from the body and pump it into the ventricles. Ventricles. The ventricles send the blood to long distances such as toes, feet, and even uh, even the brain. Now there are two blood vessels entering the heart. These blood vessels enter the right atrium, which is here, and these are called the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. They carry deoxygenated blood. The superior vena cava will get deoxygenated blood from the upper part of our body, which is above our heart, like the chest, brain, and arms. The inferior vena cava will get deoxygenated blood from the lower part of our body, which contains the abdomen, gut, and the legs. Now the blood vessels leaving the heart are pulmonary artery, which arises from the right, which arises from the right ventricles, which arises from the right ventricles, and the aorta artery, which arises from the left ventricle. Aorta is also the biggest artery present in our body, and that's how my project ends. Thank you. Basan Pradhan and I am in class 10 and I am from Ornodo Academy. So today I am going to give a short lecture about human heart. As we know that the human heart is a pumping organ. This is a muscular organ which is as big as our fist. Uh, it, it helps us to pump blood through the blood vessel of the 
सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम हेलो एवरीवन आई एम पराशक्ति सरकार फ्रॉम क्लास टेन सेक्शन अभिमा सन्हा रोल नंबर थर्टी टू टुडे आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग अबाउट इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ पी एच सो वॉट इज पी एच पी एच इज द मेजर ऑफ एच प्लस आई एस प्रेजेंट इन ए सोल्यूशन इंडिकेटिंग द एसिडिक एंड बेसिक स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द सोल्यूशन इन ए पी एच स्केल इफ द मेजर इज बिलो सेवन देन द सोल्यूशन इज एसिडिक एंड If the measure is above seven, then it's basic. So now I will be explaining about importance of pH. Number point number one, pH in our digestive system. Our stomach has an acidic pH due to the secretion of hydrochloric acid that aids in digestion. But when the amount of acid goes beyond a certain limit, uh, it causes pain and irritation. so in order to neutralize the excess acid a mild base a uh, base called antacids is usually taken point number 2 pH change as the cause of tooth decay after eating food the bacteria present in our mouth produces acid and the tooth enamel gets corroded when the pH of the acid gets below 5.5 therefore to prevent it after eating food we should use a basic solution like toothpaste point number 3 ph of the soil the ph of the soil should be between 5 and 8 if the ph of the soil is below 5 then it's acidic and if it's above 8 then it's basic in both of the cases plants cannot absorb the necessary nutrients from the soil point number 4 ph sensitivity in plants and animals our body works within the ph range of 7 to 7.8 when acid rains uh, flows in uh, rivers uh, the ph of the water body water bodies gets uh, below 7 and it becomes acidic thus the survival of uh, aquatic life becomes difficult so that's all for the importance of ph thank you hi my name is nikhil oja student from class 10 roll number 33 section chitranand goswami of ordinary academy angla Today in this video, I am going to explain about the importance of pH. So our first topic is plants and animals are pH sensitive. Our body works within the pH range of seven to seven point eight. pH of acid rain is five point six. When the water from the acid rain flows into the rivers, it causes lots of damage to aquatic life. Coming to next is our pH of the soil. Plants require a specific pH rate for healthy growth. A pH of six point five is good for most home gardens, since most plants thrive in six to seven. Coming to next is pH in our digestive system. As we know, our stomach produces hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, which means its pH is less than seven. Excess production of acid by the stomach causes pain and irritation. We usually take acid and take it to get rid of this pain. Coming to next, pH change leads to tooth decay. After eating a meal, the bacteria present in the mouth starts producing acid due to the breakdown of sugar and food particles left over in the mouth. Below 5.5, the tooth enamel that is made up of calcium phosphate, which is the hardest substance in the body, starts decaying. Therefore, it is advised to clean the mouth after eating something using toothpaste. Toothpaste are generally basic in nature. Coming to our last topic, pH in plants. Nettle leaves produce sting in sensation when contacted because they inject formic acid, and which results in burning pain. Rubbing some leaves of dock plant in the affected area provides relief to the irritation. because they are basic in nature thanks for watching i am jupiter saikya from class 10 section j and j rule number 28 today i am here to explain my science project and my topic is digestion of food in stomach as we know for the digestion process in human being we have a alimentary canal and associated glands the alimentary canal consists of mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine and anus and the associated glands are salivary gland gastric gland liver and pancreas digestion in mouth the initial digestion of food takes place in mouth itself here two types of digestion takes place first is mechanical digestion and chemical digestion the mechanical digestion is done with the help of teeth and this is the physical breakdown of food and this process is called mastication here the four types of teeth are incisor used for cutting the food canine used for curing the food Premolar used for grinding the food and molar used for grinding the food. 
Here, the two muscles help in mechanical digestion. They are temporalis muscle and masseter muscle. This is the location of temporalis muscle and this is the location of masseter muscle. The chemical digestion. The breakdown of food through enzyme is called as chemical digestion. In mouth, a fluid is present called saliva, secreted by salivary gland and this gland secretes an enzyme called salivary amylase. And it, the enzyme breaks down the carbohydrate into sugar uh, at the pH of about 7 and kills the germ through lysozyme. The tongue helps in mixing the food with saliva, creating bolus for passing through the esophagus to the stomach. The swallowing process. Now the partially digested food needs to pass, to, uh, pass forward. Uh, the inner lining of the canal has muscles that contract rhythmically in order to push the food forward. The process is here. In this process, we have a buccal cavity. This is the food bolus. This is the epiglottis, which is a lid and larynx. This is the pharynx. Esophageal sphincter. This is a muscle that is present in esophagus. And this is the esophagus and this is the trachea. So when the food bolus uh, enter from the buccal cavity to the esophagus, the tracia, in the tracia, the esophage, uh, the epiglottis, which is a lid, gets closed and the esophageal sphincter gets relaxed and thus the food enters from uh, esophagus to the stomach. My name is Malasya Saranya of Class 10 from Ornode Academy. My topic is digestion of food in human. Digestion is a process in which complex food materials are broken down into simpler substances. The digestion of food in humans takes place, uh, takes place in the alimentary canal, which is a long tube extending from the mouth to the anus. Different types of the alimentary canal are buccal cavity, esophagus or food pipe, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, anus, and two glands, namely liver and pancreas. The food is taken into the mouth. It is chewed and mixed with saliva in the buccal cavity. Saliva is a digestive juice secreted by the salivary glands. The chewed food enters the food pipe and then slowly pours inside a bag-like structure called stomach. The stomach also secretes mucus, digestive juice, and hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid kills the bacteria and make the food acidic. The food then goes into the small intestine. The small intestine receives secretions from liver and pancreas. The liver secretes bile juice while the pancreas secretes pancreatic juice. The walls of the small intestine has finger-like projections called villi. The villi have extensive networks of blood vessels. The digested food is passed into the blood vessels and the undigested food is passed into the large intestine. Excess of water and salts are absorbed by the large intestine. Undigested waste is passed out of the large intestine through the anus. I would like to end my video here. Thank you. Thank you.